What's going on everybody? It's Nick here. We're in my warehouse where I'm storing all my lumber and it looks like a bomb went off in here, but it's because I'm in the middle of a dehumidification kiln build. And so this is going to be a short video. I'm going to kind of show you around this chamber that I'm building so far and kind of make this like a multi-step series of kind of like my, my kiln build or whatever. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what I got here. Okay, here it is. This is my dehumidification kiln chamber that I'm currently building. Uh, just a bare bone chamber, nothing too crazy. It's all framed out in two by fours. I'm actually insulating it with rock wool insulation. Um, I've got some R15 here, these two. This is R13, all the sides are gonna be R13 and the top is gonna be R15. Uh, so I got actually, check out your local marketplace, Craigslist, all those kind of places. There'll be these builder liquidator guys that have these packs that might have like somebody bought them from Home Depot, Lowe's, opened them, decided they wanted something different or returned it, but it's still got all the insulation in there. So it's one of those kind of things, you get it at a fraction of the cost of what you would pay retail price for this stuff. And it's kind of the perfect insulation for a project like this. So I'm, I'm hoping by the time I'm done with this thing, including the dehumidifier, I'm gonna have about $3,000 in this thing, plus time of course. Okay, so I'm not gonna go too deep into details because this project, I'm really kind of just winging it. You know, there's some guidance online from Nile and a few other places that kind of teach you and tell you the correct way to construct a wood kiln. And this is mostly that, it's not gonna be perfect, but I think in the interest of budgetary limitations, time, and just not making this project overly complicated, this is what I'm coming up with. So this whole chamber is 14 feet long, it's eight feet tall, and it's four feet from front to back. So this opening here, I've got about 13 and a half feet of space in here from left to right and front to back after the doors are closed, when I have the doors constructed, I'm gonna have about three and a half feet of space. So uh, main reason I made it this size is I've actually got all my lumber stored on pallets, two by four pallets that I made and they're all two feet deep and I've got them in a four feet orientation, which is this. I've got a six foot. I've got uh, some eight foots. They're buried back there. And I've also got these little shorty guys in 32 inch lengths. So basically when I load this kiln up, I'll be able to get, you know, like three fours. I'll be able to get a six, a four and a 32. I'll be able to get two sixes. There's, there's a couple ways that I can lay out these pallets and I can kind of plan my loads based on what is ready to go in and on its size. So I'm gonna make uh, some big doors. I'm gonna have some kind of like uh, seam around the whole perimeter of the door with weather seals. So everything seals up nicely when I close it. But the construction itself is just two by four framing. We've got the rock wool insulation behind this vapor barrier. I've got two layers of six mil vapor barrier and over top of this and everywhere in this whole build, I'm using three quarter inch sheathing ply. So uh, when this thing is all done, you know, it's gonna have plywood everywhere here and actually the seams will look kind of like this and I'm gonna take my time and caulk all the seams when I get it all together. And I'm actually going to paint everything in like a rubberized paint. Haven't really decided what product specifically I'm gonna use. I'm leaning towards like the asphalt uh, sealer like the Henry's um, rooftop sealer. Um, it's like waterproof, it's kind of rubberized, it's cheap and ultimately I think between the vapor barrier, the vapor barriers, the three-quarter inch sheathing ply and then a couple coats of some sort of rubberized coating plus with all the caulk seams it's going to be plenty airtight and nice and sealed from outside moisture getting in. As far as the fans go, I'm gonna be running three of these 16 inch attic gable fans. Uh, these things move about 2000 CFM each. So I'm gonna put all three of them on a little mount across the top here in a row. And uh, actually, let me pull up my little digital illustration to kind of give you guys an idea. Okay, so this is a very simple drawing that I made of the kiln before I started on it. So the stud spacing and things might deviate a little bit from the version that actually exists now, but I basically got to this point in the drawing and I was like, okay, this is good enough. 
This is what I need to see just to kind of visualize it before I started cutting up wood. And uh, yeah, so basically the fans are going to be mounted up here. Uh, you know, the, the lumber will be in here um, lengthwise with, with baffles coming down. So we're going to have our positive pressure air here. The air will flow down through the stacks and we got our negative pressure where the fans are going to be pulling the air back up through and they circulate, uh, you know, standard, standard kiln uh, physics here. So nothing too crazy, new or special. It's a smaller, narrow chamber, but it makes sense for the pallets that I'm putting all my slabs and lumber on. So uh, yeah, we're going to have the heating elements. Haven't really figured out how exactly I'm going to mount them. Uh, but they're probably going to be in between the fans here on the wall and some nice ceramic bulb sockets in some way, maybe with some firewall heat shields just to, you know, as a, a fire safety measure. Um, from the side here, we're going to have an access panel where I can open this up and look at the back. And uh, it'll in, in this access panel will in some way have my like cable management. So when I have my moisture probes and stuff coming out of here from the stacks, they'll come out of this, uh, this door that I'm going to put right here. So yeah, very simple. I uh, just wanted to put this drawing up, maybe help uh, illustrate a little bit better than uh, pointing it out in the video. So yeah, that's the kiln. And then as far as the dehumidifier, I'm actually going to make like a shelf, just use a uh, crawl space dehumidifier for now. And if that proves to be a pain in the ass, then I'm just going to get a Nile L53 and it's going to go on the end here. And of course, when the fans are up, I'm going to baffle everything in a way that's nice and tidy and clean and easy to load things and take them out. Okay. As for the floor, it's not really ideal to have a wood kiln on top of concrete, mainly because concrete is so porous. Uh, moisture is going to be wicked in and out of it all the time. So to rectify this, I'm actually going to pour epoxy down on the floor just here. And so I'm going to have the epoxy. And then when I paint everything with this like rubberized coating, uh, that on top of the sealed corners, the vapor barrier, I think this thing for the size it is, it's going to be plenty sealed. But the main reason I didn't want to have to insulate the floor is to do with my loading method. Since I have everything on these pallets here, I've got a pallet jack. And the idea is to just be able to uh, load them right into the kiln as seen here and slow down before I gouge a hole in my vapor barrier before the ply is up. And yeah, so I'm basically gonna load it like that. And uh, of course, I'm gonna have big doors here that will seal nicely. And uh, these pallets of lumber will be this is a little too far back. Let me pull it to about where it would be positioned when it's operating. Yeah, so there we go. We got the fans will be blowing. They'll be creating positive pressure on this side and then negative pressure here, which is gonna wick the air through the uh, stacks of wood. And we're gonna have baffles running down here and so that's kind of the idea. Okay, so ultimately at this point, the plan is just to get a nice sealed chamber up. So I'm gonna kind of figure things out as I go. Um, I think once I get the doors on and get everything sealed up, I'm gonna be uh, placing my fans, I'm gonna be placing my heating elements, and I'm gonna start just kind of testing, figuring out how hot I can get this thing, uh, if I need to add more heating elements, if I need to change my fan orientation, whatever. There's gonna be a little bit of uh, R&D involved with this whole thing. But uh, ultimately, it's just gonna be a bare bone, uh, pretty small chamber. Uh, this thing actually at the max, if I have two like these logs here, or we'll use these as an example, two logs like this, 12 long, is actually about six to 700 uh, board feet of lumber if they're like 24, 26 inch logs. I think on average, most of my loads in this thing are gonna be about four to 500 board feed at the most. I think just to turn loads through, um, if I can get a load in and out every month or six weeks, I think that would be a pretty cool goal to work towards so far. So yeah, just kind of a bare bone build, nothing too complicated. I think this is pretty approachable for a lot of people out there that are cutting their own wood, whether you're doing it for a small business or a hobby. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna be testing this thing out over the next couple of weeks and sharing things with you guys. And I'll make these videos kind of a multi-part thing and we'll go from there. 
Okay, so that pretty much sums this video up. Just a short one today. I just wanted to show you guys this build, uh, explain what I've got going on and the plans I have for it. So in the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be finishing this build up. I'm gonna be testing heating elements, fans, access doors, figuring out how I'm gonna run all the cabling and everything in it. So I'm gonna break this up into a few videos and share this as like multiple parts for people that are wanting to build a kiln or similar kiln to this one. So, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be the, this is how you build a kiln kind of thing. I'm winging this and I'm gonna figure it out as I go. Uh, it's not rocket science. It just needs to be an airtight sealed box. that's insulated. Um, I've seen a lot of guys on forums and groups get some of these R13 chambers up to 140, 150 degrees with relative ease. So the space inside is not that large compared to like big commercial kilns. So it's not gonna be too hard to heat and control the space in there. Um, so I will share as I go and uh, maybe this will help somebody else. So uh, if you guys like what you see and uh, this might be something that's valuable to you guys, I'd love if you uh, subscribe to my channel and follow along in this project. Okay, thanks for watching you guys and talk to you on the next one.